to episode 37 of the Knitting Nurse Podcast. My name is Jasmine and I'll be your host for tonight. And I know I was gone for a very long time again. Uh, this time it was not planned, clearly, um, or like something that I wanted to do. It kind of just happened. Um, I've been gone. I have not made a video for two weeks. And um, the reason why, so the first week, <laughs> I just didn't feel like recording and I figured, you know, one week off was going to kill anyone. And then <clears throat> the second week, um, I came home from work. I work weekends on a COVID unit. Uh, so I came home from work with a cough <laughs> and um, I got tested on Thursday and it turned out I had COVID. <laughs> which like I could have told you that myself considering my array of symptoms, but um, I am feeling much better today. It is Thursday, January 27th, I think. Um, and I feel much better. It took me over a week to like start to feel better. Um, I, I'm so exhausted. I have this like long standing fatigue that I had the first time I had COVID. This is not the first time I had COVID, by the way. I've had COVID before. Just my luck. <laughs> um, so I am just tired and I am having some trouble like just catching my breath. So there might be more cuts. Um, in this video the normal because I need to stop talking and just breathe. <laughs> so um, without further ado, I'm going to show you everything that I have knit on this past week, two weeks, three weeks, however long it's been. Um, let me just, oh, I guess first I'll show you haul. I have more coming in the mail. I think they're supposed to come like later today, like during daylight hours, because it's after, it's like just after midnight, around one o'clock. <clears throat> so I have more yarn coming but I did get this yarn for a project um, from a dyer whose yarn that I've only experienced through an advent calendar and that is Lofty Loops. Um, these are her, um, these were from her first shop update of the year. Um, they so she decided to dye like all 24 colorways of her advent calendar as repeatable colors that will show up in her shop throughout the year. So this is um, Magnolia. I got two skeins of Lofty Sock Base. I'm not sure if you can read that. My phone's facing the other way so I can't actually see what you see. I might have to set up a mirror like on the other wall so that I can see what's going on there. But yes, <clears throat> it's uh, an 80-20 two-ply base, which is perfect because I'm going to be making a garment with these. The cat's like messing around with the tripod. So sorry if you're a little shaky, um, but I am going to make a garment out of these. I forget the name of the garment, but I will put, it's um it's a tee, it's a t-shirt and it's so beautiful. I'll try to put a picture and um, a the name of the pattern on the screen. And I'm just so excited. I'm not gonna cast it on until I finish my other uh, tea garment. <laughs> so I need to get on that. Um, and I'll talk more about that in plans, like towards the end of the video. Oh my gosh, and I left the bags like everywhere else, perfect. I'll just grab them later. So first, I have a couple of finished, I have two and a half <laughs> finished objects. Um, this year I'm doing Whip Go for both cross stitch and knitting. Um, Whip Go is a year long like game challenge basically. You can use any craft you want or even not a craft, like just, you know, just anything that you want to um, accomplish really. Uh, it's the brainchild of Jessie Marie Does Stuff. She's here on YouTube and Instagram. And um, this is my first year really doing it. Last year, I kind of gave up <laughs> and I just started all of the things. And this year, I really want to like 
not come out with too many more whips than I entered the year with. So I um, decided to make two separate boards. One is for cross stitch and one is for knitting. Uh, my knitting board I'm filling in as I go. Uh, she calls the numbers once a month uh, for the next month. So she called January's numbers at the end of December. She's going to call February's numbers probably later today. She usually calls them on the 27th, I believe. So um, the numbers for January were 2 and 19. And I decided to put in those spaces my two advent calendar projects. Um, because I really wanted them both done by the end of January and I did it. I got them both done. I got this one done like a few days after I filmed the last podcast um, or maybe like a couple days after it went up. I can't fully remember but this is the oh my god this is the Adventure Sum wrap and I used the Yarn Cafe Creations and Dragon Horde Yarns advent from this year the um christmas at hogwarts year five and i do want to make it clear that i do not like i bought this calendar be stop it stop go i bought this calendar before i um made the decision to purge Harry Potter from my life because I cannot support any <clears throat> I can't support any um intellectual properties of JK Rowling I cannot like maintain their popularity I cannot give her money for it I just I can't do it <clears throat> because her transphobic and homophobic and racist ideals are in everything that she creates and I just cannot I can't condone it and I bought this before I made that decision to purge all Harry Potter from my life before I just I at first I had decided okay I'll just get fan stuff but I don't even I don't want to keep it popular or you know make people think that it's okay or make people believe that I support her so I'm just not going to talk about Harry Potter or have any Harry Potter stuff in my life anymore. This is the last Harry Potter thing that I'll probably ever make. <laughs> and even then it's just yarn. Um, I decided to open it anyways and like show the colors on my Instagram. I don't even remember what any of them are called. I threw out the labels and I didn't like talk about what they were called on any social media. And I decided this year to just enjoy what I had for what it was, which is just some pretty yarn and a nice advent calendar. So this is the Adventure Some Wrap by Amba O'Brien. It's unblocked. Um, I didn't have the, well, I just didn't feel like blocking it. Let's be honest. I didn't feel like blocking it. It's like a long, like rectangular wrap and those are kind of hard for me to block because I don't have enough blocking mats <laughs> to block it so I have to figure something out I think someone did suggest um that Harbor Freight has like foam floor mats like really big ones but I kind of want the puzzle piece mat so I might just buy like children's like puzzle piece mats <laughs> instead of blocking mats because they're cheaper I've heard so we'll see but my next finished object also unblocked is my Lamina wrap also by Amba O'Brien look how gorgeous that is and this I used the Ruby and Roses advent calendar from last year as well and I did do it in order I do think that like the colors are in some sensical order unlike uh, this one <laughs> and I decided while I was knitting these two that I'm going that when I like knit with all the advent colors if I get any kind of countdown box or advent calendar or anything when I knit with the colors I am going to um, open the entire box and then I'll rearrange the colors before I cast on the project because I want them to be in 
like some sort of, I want them to be grouped by colors just so that it looks a little bit more coherent. But this looks so nice. Like these colors are gorgeous. And I finished this um, while I was still like actively sick <laughs> because it's a pretty easy knit and it kept me engaged. The lace sections kept me engaged enough to, um, you know, want to keep knitting. But the garter sections were just like bliss, <laughs> mindless bliss for six rows. <laughs> um, but I did change the pattern a little bit. It does call for like a main color. And I decided to, um, instead of like a singular main color, I was just going to use the color like from each day. And, like I was just gonna use each mini paired with a strand of undyed mohair for the garter ridges and I think it looks so good it's so nice and fluffy and the mohair like makes the garter bands like um a lot paler than the like next patterned band and it's just it just looks so nice I think this is like my favorite one I like the adventure some wrap well enough I do think these colors are really muted maybe that's like my maybe that's why I don't love this one as much as this because I the color these colors are just very muted and um, kind of dark these colors are nice and bright and fun just how I like them and oh I do have my stitch marker on here from where I was the first last time I saw you uh, I don't know if you can see that but that's where I was <laughs> where that snowflake stitch marker is and then I did all of this in two weeks how amazing <laughs> so um, those are my two advent shawls my whip go goals are complete so now I'm working on what I call S and S until the next month um, which is scraps and socks. So the next projects I have to show you are scraps and socks. I have a half finished object, which is a sock and ta-da, look, <laughs> it's done. Since I haven't been at work, um, I decided to pull out my work socks, my traveling socks. I haven't been going anywhere, so they needed a little bit of love. I did my first twisted rib. Look how nice and neat that looks and it's still super stretchy. And I love it. I can't wait to have these, this pair done and I can wear them. Cause this yarn is so beautiful. This yarn is um, sock obsession yarn. I did cast on the next <laughs> toe. Um, but it's literally just the cast on and the foundation row, foundation round. So, oh, not, not much, <laughs> but, um, this yarn is by Sock Obsession Yarns. It is, I think this one is Oso Henderson and it's so gorgeous. Oh my gosh. You should have seen the skein. It's amazing. And I have another pair of socks knit with her yarn. And then I have still more of her yarn behind me. Um, okay, so the next pair of socks I worked on is another Sock Obsession Yarns sock. Um, and this is like a darker purple and it's Cabinet Phobia. I knit both of these socks for the, what is it? I knit both of these socks uh, I cast them on last year for the um, Rainbow Sock Chronicles and I did not complete the Rainbow Sock Chronicles clearly because I'm still working on these socks, but it's fine. Um, I did knit a heel on these socks. These are knit on 10 inch circulars. Um, the Addy, what are they, Sock Rockets, something, something along those lines. They're Addy Sock Needles um, in size two. And these are meant to be like spoopy socks, hence the neon green with a dark purple. But, you know, it's January. <laughs> so 
so who knows <laughs> and I really love them um this yarn is a two ply which I did not realize until I like wound it up and then the other yarn the lighter purple is a four ply which is what I prefer to knit with for socks um I found that I prefer like a three or a four ply when I'm knitting socks and I prefer a two ply when I'm knitting anything else <laughs> so that's those and then I have my Malia made it socks um, I bought a January like a new year countdown box from Malia made it um, it's a 31 day uh, neon rainbow mini skein um, countdown and I got the unwrapped version because I knew exactly what I was going to knit with them. I was going to knit socks um, and do five rounds per stripe. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Do not have much going on with these. Um, I've not been keeping up with these. I think this one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'm on the fifth color for these socks. I'm about to wind up the sixth. These are both, I'm knitting these in tandem because if I don't, I'm never going to knit the next one and like because they're individual skeins so I have to stripe them myself um and it's just easier to knit both socks at once so these are both being knit on um 10 inch circulars once again the same Addy sock needles and I really like these I think my stitches look very smooth and once again this is a four ply sock yarn my favorite Okay, <clears throat> um, next I have kind of a scrappy pair of socks. Um, I just cast these on, not just, but like I cast them on last week, I think. And I am using my Shawlography colors. So I'm calling them my Shawlography socks. And I'm using them in the same order that I knit with them in my Shawlography shawl. Um, I, I should have photos on my Ravelry project page if you want to like see more of my holography shawl. Right now I'm wearing my slip extravaganza that I knit in 2021. Yeah, that I knit like that I knit last year, early last year. Um, and I had quite a bit of yarn left over, so I'm knitting just some scrappy socks. I'm doing 10 rounds per color, except for heels, toes, except for like the heels and toes. <laughs> um, I started with the blue, that was my color A, and I just knit the entire toe. I'm doing 10 rounds per stripe and because my foot is 75 rounds I'm going to knit the heel with like the 70th stripe <laughs> as well um, so some colors will use more yarn than others but that is okay I kind of just want to pair I just want to like you know decrease the amount of scraps that I have to work with because I plan on casting on the I've yarn in the mail on its way. I know I said I was not going to do that anymore, but I have no self control. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I, <clears throat> my gosh. So I bought some yarn to knit the sea glass tea by wool and pine at designs. And um, I plan on knitting yeah, I plan on knitting the sea glass tee, but I'm going to make it long sleeved to make a, a fingering weight sea glass sweater. Um, and it's going to be made like pretty much entirely out of scraps, um, especially like mini skein scraps, except I'm going to have like a main color <laughs> still. I'm going to be using Knit Picks Stroll uh, fingering and the colorway Dove Heather as my main color. And I hope it'll look nice. <laughs> Um, and I did that just because I didn't want to have to manage weaving in like a million ends all in different places. So I just had a main color that I would hold continuously and then I'd switch out the contrasting um, minis. So hopefully, hopefully it'll look nice. Um, I want the point of this to be like an ugly sweater. And I just hope it looks good. <laughs> so um, 
that's that. The yarn is not coming in until like later today, like I said. So I am going to cast it on. I know I said I was not going to cast on any more garments until I made a whip go, but it's scrappy, so it doesn't count. <laughs> so uh, this is my bag of like scraps that I've already put in my mitered square blanket <laughs> that I'm going to use in my, um, in my, oh my gosh, in my sea glass. So speaking of my mitered square blanket, I don't think I have ever showed this on my channel. Um, so I have a box of scraps here. Ugh, I have a box of scraps here that I, whenever I'm done with like a mini skein or like I'm done knitting socks, I throw it in here and I use it for my scrappy projects. The first thing I do is I put it in my mitered square blanket and I am using the, there's still like yarn attached. I'm in the middle of a square. <laughs> um, I'm using the, the stained glass scrappy blanket pattern by Ladybug Laboratory. I don't know if this is like gonna fit in frame, but this is where I am at um, for the blanket. I started here, this was my first square. And then I kind of just kept adding and adding and some of these yarns might be a bit familiar to some of you. And then over here is when I started adding my minis. So I kind of like looked at my blanket and how it fell on my lap. Because I want like a nice throw. I looked at my blanket and how it fell on my lap. And I decided that I wanted it to be about double the width that it already was. And it was six squares wide at that time, so I made six more squares. Um, I just attached this one, this like bright green square here, and I knit, I knit six squares, and then I started, I started to attach them, starting with that green one. So these are the rest of my squares. <laughs> That I have to attach and then once I, I attach these I will um, kind of knit a few squares like higher a few rows of squares higher and see um, how I like how the like where the blanket falls because I don't like lap blankets I like to curl up underneath my blankets and they just need to be wide enough I love like an I prefer a full-sized blanket but that's gonna take a while <laughs> Um, not to mention I have to back it with like, I might like it, back it with just some plain fleece or something, but we'll see. And I think that's it. I think that's all the knitting that I have. Um, that is so strange because before, if I was gone for three weeks, I'd have like a million projects that I worked for five minutes on and then, um like five new new cast-ons <laughs> but I'm trying to be a little more monogamous because I want to get rid of some of these whips I want to whip the whips this year so I am going to clean up this mess <laughs> that I have in, around me and I'll be right back with my cross stitch okay of course because I'm me I haven't done this in a while y'all so Forgive me if I'm a little out of practice, but I have an unfinished object as well. Um, and that just means that I ripped something out. Um, I ripped out my purple haze sweater. It has been completely frogged. Most of the yarn has been salvaged, however, and I'm going to repurpose it. Um, and the reason why I, why I ripped it out is because I have been watching, um, I've been like watching Nitty Natty's um, older videos like from start to finish because I guess I just don't really have anything else to watch right now. I'm home, like I, I was home all weekend so there wasn't really anything to catch up with <clears throat> like in the past week. So I have been like watching back her videos and I decided that I was going to rip out my purple haze sweater because it just doesn't really fit me right. It doesn't fit me right and the mohair combined with like the 
the base yarn that I used is just really scratchy. <laughs> the mohair by itself is fine, the cotton by itself is fine, but combining them is just really scratchy and I did not like how it felt. So I ripped it out and um, I have all of the, I salvaged like most of the yarn, including the mohair. Oopsies. And it's all here in little balls. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't realize like how much I like cut the mohair until I was like unwinding it and I, the, <laughs> it kept stopping. <laughs> um, and I just hand wound it into these balls here and it did take me a while because I knit double, like I held the yarn double. So, um, yeah, like there's still, this is the last one. <laughs> it took me a while cause I knit, I held the yarn double and I had to separate them as I was winding and sometimes they got twisted around each other. So I had to like just maneuver things and it took a while, it took a few days <laughs> to unwind, but it's unwound. The yarn is being repurposed. I have a plan for all of it. Okay, so we're moving on to plans. So I have my February WIPCO projects, my two February focus projects picked out. I intend to finish both of them. And normally I would not intend to finish a garment in a month, especially the shortest month of the year, but this is a crop top. So I think I can do it. Um, and I normally, normally I wouldn't do this, but I have not worked on this pattern in a while, in like a few months. <laughs> so I kind of like picked it up. I knit on it a little bit to like try to remind myself um, where the pattern is, like what my gauge is, how I was holding the yarn, how the yarn felt in my hands. Um, and just like re-familiarize myself with this pattern since it is a garment and I want it to be accurate. And I like redid some measurements and I did realize that I have to knit, um, the sleeves deeper than is called for, which is good. It's good that I picked this up, um, and knit on it early, early, <laughs> but this is the petal party crop top. Um, this is, <clears throat> God, this is just the back panel and I'm knitting it with the We Love Yarn 100% Cotton, the Simple Cotton 8-4, which is fingering weight. And the color is 19, this really beautiful pale pink. And I love it. It's so gorgeous. Oh my gosh, I like cannot. Um, but yeah, I do have to knit like two inches. I have to knit each panel two inches deeper than what is called for. So that is what I'm going to do. It's a drop shoulder tee, which I really like the look of, but knitting drop shoulder is, uh, I don't know. I don't want to say it's not fun, but it's not fun. <laughs> um, the most pleasant shaping to knit is either a circular yoke or raglan increases because it's seamless <laughs> um but you know seamless garments they are a little harder to customize because you have because if you're making one side longer than the other then you have to do short rows and like kind of finagle with it a little bit more so it's not as easy and I don't think it's as easy to design like seamless items either. So the next project is going to be, I'm like in the middle of the row, but these are short rows, so it's fine. <laughs> it's going to be the um, Slippy V Crescent Shawl by Stephen West. Come on. Slippy V Crescent by Stephen West. And the reason why it's like in a circle is because I'm in the middle of a row. <laughs> I'm in the short row garter ridge section at the very beginning. Um, so it's pretty mindless knitting. And this is a shawl. It's like one of his smaller shawls, which isn't really that small. <laughs> it's 
um, but I plan on making it just a little bit bigger because I want to use up as much of this yarn as I can. This is, let me find a ball that I'm not working with. This is The Wandering Flock. Um, all of the yarn is The Wandering Flock. It's the single ply 100% merino base. And I'm not gonna like tell, talk about the colors too much because the labels are inside the cakes and I don't wanna mess them up. But I, oh my gosh. <laughs> the yarn is coming apart. I need to make more yarn cozies. That's what I should do with all the scraps instead of cast on a new sweater. <laughs> more yarn cozies. But um, it's the Wandering Flock I got the kit from the Stephen and Penelope website, which is why it's all Wandering Flock yarn and not Knit Picks. And I kind of love it. I think I love single ply, which is dangerous <laughs> because um, Knit Picks doesn't have single ply fingering. I don't think Knit Picks has single ply fingering weight yarn. Yikes. But it's okay because plenty of other dyers have single ply fingering weight yarn that I could get. It's just not gonna be Knit Picks prices, but it's okay. I love hand dyed yarn and I'm more than willing to pay the price. <laughs> and yeah, I love it. I cannot wait <laughs> to work on that one, especially because the yarn just feels so nice. And I love the colors. Um, I'll talk more about the colors like once I'm actually working on it. So next episode, we will be in February. Black History Month. I do have some Black History Month plans as well. And February plans for cross stitch. So stay tuned. Okay, so I think I gathered everything. Um, I also flipped my camera back to facing me. So pardon if there are any changes in quality or like the angle changes or anything. Um, because I'm showing my cross stitch, I really need you guys to like see <laughs> everything that's in frame. So yeah, until I get like a mirror to put like behind or something like that, like I need, I just need the front facing camera. <laughs> so, um, I'm probably going to be looking at myself. I'm trying to look at the camera more, but it's hard. Okay. So first I bought, um, I sold this idea from Michelle Bendy of Bendy Stitchy and I got myself a large uh, cross stitch journal. It's basically like a wedding scrapbook. It has like pink pages. It's so cute and it has it's like scrapbook paper. <clears throat> and I bought rolls of double sided tape um, because I don't want to stick anything in here like too permanently in case I do decide later that I want to fully finish it or you know turn it into something or frame it so um this is big enough for most like smalls <laughs> that I do and I could probably do like multi-page spreads of like pattern sets I could do um you know this is a 12 by 12 inch book and the reason why I wanted a big book is because I want a coffee table book of my cross stitch I think that would be so cool um there's nothing in it I did stick my snuculent uh in here just to remind myself that i need to put it in here maybe write like some notes or something on some like other like actual paper but you know if i'm i don't know i don't think i'm ever gonna frame this or do anything with it so i think i'll just cut really close margins and tape it in here stick it in there Um, so that's a past finish and just like something that I'm kind of excited about. <laughs> Never really had a journal before, but I do have two finishes. One of them is a page finish, but I still count it as a finish. So the other one is an actual finish. Um, so this past weekend while I was sick was 24 hours of cross stitch. I did not count my hours, so I didn't like really participate, but I decided to set a goal of a finish just a finish, um, like object. So not a page finish, like an actual finished project. 
and I chose my Riolis uh, Foxes in the Leaves kit and it's done. I think I had like these two toes of the middle fox and a like half of the bottom fox done when I pulled it out. And this is where it's completely done. Like all the stitching, all the back stitch. And it's so cute. This one, I considered putting it in the journal, but I think I might frame this. Um, I'll see if I can go to Michael's and find just like a long frame and have them cut a mat for me. And I'll stick this in there. It's so cute. And it was so simple and quick. They Before they were backstitched, they looked like little Cheeto puffs. So remember, they're my fuzzy Cheeto puffs. And the backstitching was, <clears throat> was so fun. Um, I'm not joking when I say backstitch is one of my favorite parts of cross stitch. <laughs> and it was so much fun. I loved it. And I'm excited to do more patterns like this. I have quite a few, like, um, you know, Eastern European style cross stitch patterns as PDFs. I have a couple of um, other realist kits that I really like that have a good amount of back stitch. So I am excited. <laughs> um, next, oh, I guess I should show you my other finished object. <gasps> which is the beast. Super size max color a stitching shelf. Artwork is by Amy Stewart, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. And I finished page two. I look. <laughs> I started page three. I actually got a decent amount done on page three. I didn't put in these red parked threads yet, but um, I finished page two. I'm so excited. So, I took a picture. I'll probably try to insert the picture like on over top of this so that y'all can really see what it looked like. And I'm making good progress on page three. Uh, well, it's not really page three. It's like the third page down. <laughs> I'm calling it page three. But I made some good project progress on this third page because it's mostly just the greenery. So it's like, you know, a like a couple dozen colors just spread, just scattered along the entire page. Cat's playing with something. Just scattered along the entire page. And it looks, it's, ah, oh, it's great. I can't wait to see this third page finished. I love it. So, I'm trying to like pose like, discreetly so that I can get a screen grab for my thumbnail <sighs> oh here's the back like do you kind of see my um like how the direction that I stitch in I tend to stitch in columns so cool okay next I made a good amount of progress on snail houses um, I'm doing the forget me knots um, snail house. This is like my couch project. So if I'm sitting on the couch and I decide I don't want it in anymore, I'll pull this up because it's nice and small and it's a kit. It's a paper pattern. So I don't have to worry about my tablet dying um, when it's unplugged or anything or leaving it on the couch and it dies or something like that. So I went ahead one ahead I didn't go ahead and do anything um I did move the the hoop because I'm like almost done with the house part and this is just like a hanging thread <laughs> don't mind it <clears throat> look how look how nice that looks and then I'm gonna start on the snail um the like actual snail part and I'm going to fix the eyes because yeah. Because as you can see, this snail is anatomically incorrect. The eyes are here where human eyes are, but these are its eye stalks. And like some of the snail houses are like that. Like I have the pumpkin one. It's probably going to be a little hard to see. But I have the pumpkin one and this one is anatomically correct. The eyeballs are in the eye stalks. But like, 
the grapes, I have all six of them, the grapes is like, I also have to fix, I don't understand. Oh, Forrest, what are you doing? Like, I love you, but come on. Good God. <laughs> Anyways, I am almost done with the house part and then I can start on the snail and I'm going to fix where the eyes go. <laughs> I'm just going to move them uh, to the like actual eye stalks. And the Riola's foxes were on my Whipco board, so I have to take them off. I don't know if I'm going to like count them as done and like mark it off or if I'm going to replace it with a different, I think I'll just mark it as done and call it a day. And if I finish those snow houses before they're called, then I'll just mark those as done too. Cause why not? <laughs> I think if a whip gets finished or abandoned before it gets called, it's fair game. Okay, so I did have a new start. It's still on my frame, so bear with me. And I know, I know, I said I was not going to have another... Um, oh my god. The brain fog is real. I said I wasn't going to have another full coverage new start until I reach 10% on something else. But I mean, come on. It's almost February, which is when we stitch birds in February. It's hosted by Miss Late Pages, Jessie. And um, I decided to start Spirit Super Sized Spirit of Flight, which is why there's like this mess of fabric behind me. And I started it on Beige Jobelin. And oh my god, it is amazing. I love Jobelin is an even weave that stitches like linen and it's fantastic and I love it. I only have like this little corner up here done so not much and it's a super size pattern so it's gonna take a while but maybe but it's regular color so it will go faster than the beast. I will not be buying any more super size max color patterns no matter how beautiful they are because I cannot put myself through this again. At least not until this one is completely finished. I will only have one super, I think this is something that I can stick with that I'll only have one SSMC pattern at a time. Cause I can't. Excuse me. Oof. It was unladylike. But I'm hardly a lady, so. Okay, I think that's it. I don't know. I guess I guess I kind of touched like a couple things also, but I am still sticking with getting to 10% on a stitching shelf. I am at two point, so like in the two percent <laughs> range. Um, I have like uh around 18,000 stitches in there now which is kind of impressive for a month. I started at like, like a little less than 14,000 stitches and I have a little over 18,000. So <sighs> I'm making good progress. And I am keeping up, I'm keeping track of like where I should be each day. And I am ahead, which is why I started <laughs> a new start. <clears throat> so I do have some um, February Vieri and Black History Month plans for next month. Um, I am going to work on Spirit of Flay and I'm also going to work on Birds to the Bows for February Vieri. And I also want to touch Kristen, the Arctic Ocean Mermaid. I'm not going to pull them out now because, um, I don't want to. <laughs> I'm going to try to put pictures in of them, what they look like on the screen. Um, so Chris. Christine, I think is how she's pronounced, the Arctic Ocean Mermaid for Black History Month because I wanted to stitch a black character. Not a conversion, not like, you know, just Black History Month words. <laughs> um, I want to stitch a canonically black original character that someone designed to be black. And Christine is the only one that I have and one of the few that I'm aware of 
Um, a lot of the other ones just aren't really my style. I tend to grab like Joan Elliott's or Bella Filipina's and um, try to convert them myself, which is fine, but you know, they're not meant to be black. Christine is black. She is meant to be black. And I'm going to stitch her for Black History Month. And um, the cat made a mess. <laughs> she ate her food and she spilled some. So, oh well, we'll have to clean that up later. Um, but yeah, that is like, that's what I've decided. <laughs> And I really love Christine. I think I only have her arm done and some of the icicles along the top. So I'm going to try to get the top border done and um, work some more on her. Maybe I'll just work on her and then outside of Black History Month, I'll get the, the border done as well. And um, I think that's all I have to talk about before I really run out of breath. Um, it was really fun getting back into this again um I really missed you guys or you all and I you know I'm excited to I'm excited for the rest of this year um I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you find joy in everything that you're working on bye